Greetings everyone. Today on the bench I have this realistic SA150 integrated stereo amplifier. I want to put it on the Quantasylum audio analyzer and see how it performs. About every year I go up to Michigan and hang out with a friend for a few days. We get out into nature and hike and bike on trails. It's really beautiful up there in Michigan around the lakes as you go north. He's into audio and electronics as I am, and uh, he gave me this amplifier, so really appreciate that, and I'm going to test it out. And in a later video, I'm going to modify it. I think he said it works, but I have not powered it up yet. And sometimes when you're running tests and things, you find little issues that need to be fixed. So we'll uh, check all that out and get it on the analyzer. So this particular model was available from mid-80s to mid-90s, I think. After that, they came out with the SA-155, which is pretty much the same amplifier, but they modernized it and it had a black front. But Radio Shack always carried a budget integrated amplifier like these over several years. Because they're really popular with the customers, because many people don't want to spend a lot of money on a stereo system. They just want something for background music. They can add a tuner or a record changer, or tape deck, small pair of speakers. Now these things are pretty light on power. I think this is rated 1.8 watts per channel. And you get basic functions. Over here we have a bank of switches for power, speakers, a stereo mono switch. Uh, we get a tone control balance, of course the input selector and volume, and the quarter inch jack for headphones. So if we take a look on the inside of this unit, it's pretty basic here. Here is the amplifier section. And if I turn it over, you can see it's based on an integrated circuit chip. The LA4440. What's interesting, Radio Shack rates this thing only to handle 8 ohm loads, and there's probably a couple reasons for that. But that chip actually uh, can handle down to 2 ohm load stereo because it can be bridged to handle 4 ohm loads, probably meant for car stereo use. In fact, I'm pretty sure it is because it has a high voltage surge rating and the way it can be bridged to handle about 20 watts into 4 ohms. But I think due to the uh, small transformer they're using here and the heat sinking, that it's connected to the um, steel chassis here. Steel's not a very good conductor of heat, so it limits how much heat you can get out of the chip, so perhaps that's the reason. And uh, what caught my eye is, you know, this is the power supply filter capacitor. It's only rated 1,000 microfarads. So in a future video, probably the next video after this one, I'm going to modify this thing and uh, test it again. I'm going to change some parts out and see if we can uh, uh, make it a little more capable. Uh, make it handle 4 ohm loads as well. Um, increase the thermal dissipation here and see if we can make it perform a little better. So yeah, there's not much to it. That's just the support components for the chip right here. Over here we have a phono preamp section with the RIAA equalization. So it's just a uh, basic job there with uh, four transistors, two per channel. be interesting to see how that performs. So looking at the back of the unit, this allows you to switch between a ceramic or magnetic cartridge on your phono input. You have your tape, tuner, tape out, and they're using RCA connectors for the speakers which is common on lower uh, priced stereo equipment back in the day. Okay, so the next thing is to see if this thing's gonna work or not. Okay, so I checked this thing over. I measured some of the electrolytic caps in circuit here. The ones that would measure in circuit are good. 
the switches and potentiometers are not scratchy that's good don't need to spray anything so I have it hooked up ready to test so there's the load non-inductive switchable 8 and 4 ohm load and everything's hooked up to the quant asylum so let's begin the test okay this is my usual kickoff test where I measure the amplifier at 1 watt into 8 ohms at 1 kilohertz just to see how things are going here and you see the distortion is pretty good it's under 0.1 which I like to see the gain of the amplifier is 27.76 that's measured with the volume control fully open I do see a lot of electrical noise getting in here let's see if I can put a marker on that yeah 120 so might be a good idea to see if we can increase the power supply filter there and that might make a difference looking at the red here which is the right channel it's pretty much an overlay so we're seeing the same performance frequency response I'm showing both channels because I want to see the balance between the channels and it's pretty good and from about 2 kilohertz on down you know that's about 20th of a DB there's no way you can tell that difference and this garbage in here is due to the noise getting in the quant asylum puts out a sweep and if noise gets in with the signal it's going to cause uh, some bumpiness in the response but at the 20 hertz line uh, we're below minus 5 db so yeah we lose quite a bit we're 3 db down around 27 hertz so you know it's not high five response or anything like that but you have to remember this budget amp was meant to be used with budget speakers that probably start rolling off around 80 or something but yeah that's one thing I want to do is see if I can improve that response when I do the modifications on the high end you see there's a widening of difference between the channel you know about half a DB down here and uh, let's see at 20 kilohertz where yeah, about I don't know two and a half depends on the channel you're looking at but two and a half db down also testing the amp at four ohm loads it's not really designed for that as you can see we are rolling off here three db down at 20 30 probably like 43 hertz high ends about the same but yeah we're rolling off early probably due to the output coupling capacitors they're 1000 microfarads and you know that's going to cause you to lose response at the lower frequencies here is the frequency response with the volume control set around 11 o'clock and the reason for this is that it has a permanent loudness built in. There's that extra tap on the volume control potentiometer, and there's some, you can see, capacitors that are connected to that on the board. And if I set my 0 dB reference point at 1 kilohertz, look at this, we've got a huge bump of 12 dB, 20, 30, 40, around. 40 to 50 hertz so below 100 here and even above that there's a huge bump there and you can see we get another rise up in the high frequency range here and that goes up to about 9 db or so I know a lot of people like that loudness response at lower volumes because it, it makes it more equal contour for your hearing but all my other amps I've built are perfectly flat. I might disable that loudness function when I do my modifications. Okay, so now I'm measuring the output power versus distortion. And in this case, the right channel is red and left is blue. Normally I use blue for 8 ohm and red for 4 ohm, but 
In this case, I wanted to see both channels make sure they're functioning properly. Because if you have a failing component or a drifting component, you'll start seeing differences here. But they're, they're within tolerance, I would say, here. At 1 watt, we're getting decently under 0.1%, which is good for this amp. And at 2 watts, we're hitting 0.1%. Again, this is all at 1 kilohertz. And we get into clipping, and that's about 2.5 watts at 1% distortion. Being logarithmic, it won't be right in the center. Now, I don't have the manual specifications in front of me, but if it was rated 1.8 watts at 1 kilohertz, uh, we're doing a little better than that. Okay, so now it's power versus distortion at 4 ohms. And you can see we are a little higher now at the 1 watt line. We're still under 0.2% at 1 watt. And we seem to start to knee up into clipping about the same point as we did 8 ohms. But we get to 3 watts at 1% with 4 ohms. I think that all has to do with the ripple filter on the power supply. It's a pretty small value cap. It's only 1,000 microfarads. So you get a lot of ripple, so you lose headroom. So with a larger ripple cap, I think we can get better response here. Maybe look for some lower ESR output coupling caps because it is a single supply amp and the output are, uh, the outputs are coupled with the capacitor. So yeah, some improvements there should boost the power. And I'd like to get better dynamic power at 4 ohms. I don't expect continuous power to go up a whole lot because we are limited with that smaller transformer. Okay, so now we're looking at frequency versus distortion, measuring the left and right channels again. And you can see here we're getting that capacitor rise, as I call it these capacitor coupled amps they always have that big bump at lower frequencies again I think that using a larger value would bring this down we're crossing the one percent line around 70 Hertz and uh, the nice thing though is at the high end it's not going up too much there is a deviation between channels here and the left channel drops down below 0.1% at 20 kilohertz, where the other one is, uh, what would that be, Point around 0.2, a little over 0.2 or so. So, yeah, I'm not sure what that's about, but that's what we get, and we don't get upset. Okay, and now I'm looking at the phono preamp section. It's set to magnetic. And I want to see how it follows the RIAA curve. So I set 1 kilohertz to be our relative 0 dB point, which is dBr at 0 here. You can see there's about 1 dB of difference between the channels. That could be due to my attenuators, just a potentiometer. I'd have to test further to see the difference, but I'm not really concerned. And we're, we're about minus 20 dB. We're in the neighborhood, at least, at the high end, which you want to see. But we don't get quite to 20 dB at 20 hertz here. See, we're heading that way, and then we just kind of roll off. And it might be by design with this amp. I don't know. But it's not quite getting there in the low end. It might be kind of a very rough subsonic filtering going on. These wiggles are just an artifact of measuring. Might have to use a higher FFT to get it smoother. But now you can see what's going on there with the photo preamp stage. One interesting thing with this amp I see here. It's got a ceramic and magnetic capability with the phono input. However, even in ceramic mode, it still runs the signal through the phono preamp. So it, it gets that RIAA equalization. But what they're actually doing 
In ceramic mode, they're just switching in about 4K of input impedance. So what that does with a ceramic cartridge, which normally likes to see a very high impedance, that cuts its output and it really rolls off its high frequency response. So the Phono preamp just brings it back up and reverses that response. Uh, you know, I no way I can really test that. I doubt it's perfectly flat, but that just makes it easy for them to design a uh, ceramic compatible phono stage here. So there you go, the Realistic SA integrated stereo amplifier. So in an upcoming video, I want to mod this thing. I'm going to see if I can get a little better performance out of it. I'm debating whether I should get rid of the uh, loudness contour for this volume control. How that works at lower volume settings, it adds more of that big bump to the bass and the high frequencies. And as you turn it up, that goes away. And kind of dependent on your input signal as well. If you have a louder input signal and the amp's playing louder, you'll also have that big bump where you really don't want it. I'm more of an audio purist. I would rather not have it there. So I'm thinking I might delete that. My friend said he doesn't really like the sound of this amp. And it's probably because of that loudness contour because, you know, the rest of the amp seems pretty decent for what it is. I mean, it may not be hi-fi spec or anything, but, you know, really the biggest thing I see is that huge loudness contour with the volume which might make the bass a little more muddy depending on your uh, your speakers and your signal levels going into it but yeah I will wrap it up here and I will thank you for watching